In our previous video, we have updated user service implementation class by updating address object and setting user details and generating address public ID. And we've also updated user controller by not using binutils anymore and using model mapper instead. So now let's run this application. Let's see how it works. And if there is an issue, we'll fix it. So to do that, I will set the breakpoints so that I can see things working. I have one break breakpoint inside of create user here, and I will add one breakpoint inside of user service implementation, maybe uh, right here. So I will debug it. And it looks like we have an issue. Let me scroll up and read it. Annotation exception, one to one, menu to one, address entity user details, references and unknown entity user DTO. Okay, so let's go to address entity first. I'll switch back to Spring and then I will go to address entity. And this is our address entity and it references unknown right. So this one is user DTO, but we will need to make it user entity. So I will change the data type of user details into user entity like this. And I will need to update getters and setters. So that needs to return user entity. And this needs to take user entity as well. Okay. And now let's open address DTO just to make sure that we have everything correct there. User DTO. User DTO. Okay, so now let's try again. I will go back to my user controller and debug this application one more time. Okay, my application is up and running. So I'll bring up my postman and I'll send this request one more time. Yes. And now I'm inside of REST controller, create user. I know this part of the code works well, so I'll simply resume debugging. And now I'm inside of create user. So I'll, I can step over maybe one iteration. I will step over in, inside of the for loop and I will go until the address is set. And now I will inspect the user object. And here's my list of addresses, element data, first address. And I see that address ID is set. And I see that user details is also set. Okay, so now I can resume playing or let me actually set another breakpoint. Maybe just before I store it, I have a breakpoint here. Okay, so I'll resume debugging. Resume. And now just before saving this information, which is before saving user entity into a database, I can inspect user entity object just to make sure I have both addresses here, address one and address two. And for the second address, I also have the address ID set and user details set. So all is working well. Let's just resume debugging and switch back to our postman. And we have a successful response. So user details was successfully stored. Now we can go back to our database now. And let me bring up my scale workbench. And I will execute use photo app command. And then I will execute select from users. And I have one user which I have just created. And I see it's user ID. Now I will select all from addresses. Select all from addresses table and see what we have there. And inside of the addresses table, I have two addresses, two records. Each address has unique public ID and each address has a type. One is billing, another is shipping and each address has a user ID foreigner key, which is equal to 19. So if I select all from users, the user that I should have in my database, its database ID should also be 19. So if I run this SQL query, this is my user record. 
and the database ID is 19. So it's working. One thing that we could improve here also, if I switch back to my postman, I see that the response, the confirmation that user was created, the user rest object, doesn't contain address details yet. So what I can do, I can update user rest to include the list of addresses into this response object. So let's try doing this in the following video.